Hello everyone, this is Yuris Trivia, and with the recent popularity of the subscriber game multiplayer tournament on the channel, there have been a surge in interest regarding multiplayer matches for Total War 3 Kingdom, so it's about time we do a tier list series covering all the units available for multiplayer, color by color, starting with the purple units today. Now, the purple units in Total War 3 Kingdom represent largely melee infantry, and by and large, they are designed to counter other forms of infantry units in the game, with their relatively high charge for infantry as well as solid damage. And of course, with over 50 units, there are going to be some outliers, but for the general purpose of our discussion in terms of their purpose in the army, the purple units, or melee infantry, is going to be used to counter other infantry units. So with this in mind, let's first go over all these units from the cheapest to the most expensive, as in multiplayer, aside from a unit stat, and what general you can recruit them on, the unit cost is going to be the most important factor as all players are limited by a set army fund. So kicking things off, we have the cheapest purple unit or the Peasant Warriors. This is a Yellow Turban DLC unit available for all Yellow Turban DLC characters from tier one. And what generals these units are available on is going to be quite important when considering how to use them because you can't really recruit them without the proper general in multiplayer. Now, because of their extremely low cost, 200 being the cheapest you can find in the game, they make for excellent filler units despite having a poor damage setup because all 35 damage are on melee base. And in multiplayer, you oftentimes find yourself facing against more elite and smaller armies. So armor piercing damage is preferred by a large margin in multiplayer compared to campaign. So this is going to make this unit a bit weaker, especially with the lower attack rate. But thankfully, due to its high melee charge bonus and the expendable, which means its morale would not impact any of your other units should this unit route, it makes for a pretty decent filler unit if you have a little bit of money left over to recruit unit, or if you just want a cheap unit to occupy a good mass for your army while you spend most of your other money on more elite unit for your other generals, it's a good option there as well. Then taking quite a jump in terms of cost, we move to the 380 to 410 range with these five units here from Ravine Warriors to Peasant Volunteers, Chanters, Yellow Turban Warriors, and Bandit Warriors. We're going to be doing this in groups of relatively close cost. Ravine Warriors is the Nama unit. All Nama generals share the same roster of units available to all of them with some minor requirement differences. These are all tier one units available for all generals at tier one. And the Ravine Warriors, if we take a look at it, also very poor damage. They are also expendable, but at 380, they're about twice the cost as our Peasant Warriors we just saw. So that's going to make a major difference there. And also they're going to be competing against other alternative units that you could recruit on your Naman Generals. That makes this a little bit less attractive. Then the Peasant Volunteer is a Zhang Jiao, Zhang Bao, Zhang Liang exclusive unit. These came with the Mandate of Heaven DLC. Uh, it's different from the Yellow Turban DLC, and it's much worse because it's double cost for the same unit. And then we have the Chanters, which is exclusive to He Man and Huang Shao, or basically uh, the Scholars. And you end up with a support character that doesn't really have a lot of combat stat, but if you bring one of these in your army, you could give nearby ally units a 10% boost to their damage, as well as a 10% boost to their armor, which is the most attractive part about this unit. You obviously don't need a lot of them. They also have Encourage, so you can also boost nearby units' morale. They're really just a support unit in your army, and it does help that they only cost 400. Then for Yellow Turban Warriors, these are the slightly upgraded version of Yellow Turban Infantry available for all Yellow Turban DLC characters. They have formations for the first time, and if we look at their damage, it's nothing to really mail home about. It's not really good. Uh, the stats okay, has a shield, uh, nothing to really say about these units, they're average. And then we have Bandit Warriors, which is shared among all the Bandit character rosters. This is sort of their militia replacement unit. It does have great damage in terms of armor piercing, and it does use an axe, which can grant uh, you know, shield break, reducing the evasion on enemy shielded unit. So there are some bonuses there. But overall, due to their low morale, since these are tier 1 units, these are quite weak options. And that brings us to our 450 cost range, and we have 5 units here, starting with the Huang Lao Paragon. These units are available to He Man, Huang Shao, 
Zhang Bao and Zhang Jiao uh, at tier two and three. Uh, most of the generals are tier three. I think Zhang Jiao actually can get these at tier two, but you probably want to level up Zhang Jiao to tier three anyways for his unique ability. And the thing about these units is they finally have a decent morale at 40, which is pretty good. You want to be above at least 30 because you want to survive Ventral's Roar, which has a threshold of 30. And if you look at the damage here, 61 base, 15 armor piercing. These are really good damage figures. 27 attack rate, decent charge. They have good evasion and good armor for their cost. And the only weakness is they are a small unit, so only half the units available. But given their high damage output, this is a fairly good trade-off, I believe. And then we have the Yellow Sky Heralds, and they're once again available only on Heman and Huang Shao, or basically uh, the Scholars from the Yellow Turban DLC. And as you can see, the damage is not bad. 83 charge, 24 attack speed, 10, 21 split on the armor piercing and base figures, so a decent amount of armor piercing damage, and because they're unbreakable, that is extremely attractive value, especially since you can get 120 units. If you need to just hold a place for a good amount of time to buy time for your generals to flank around, buy time for your cavalry to flank around, or just for your range units to move up, all sorts of things, unbreakable units are essential for that situation. And because they have decent damage, at least you can return back a good amount of damage with these units. So this is also quite attractive at such a cheap cost at 450. Then moving on to Axe Band, this is the standard Militia Axe unit. Really nothing to say here, has good charge, sure, but uh, at this point and this cost, the quality is just too weak. And following it, we have the Saber Militia, which is the Militia tier Saber unit, different weapon, same tier, very similar stats. The trade-off is you end up not having Shield Breaker because you're using a Saber instead of an Axe, so it's technically worse but it is the only unit available on all generals, regardless of class, where Axe Band's only available on all Sentinel generals, so there's a small difference there. And then for Naman Warriors, these are the standard troop for the Naman unit, also nothing to really mail home about, very similar to the Militia units we have just spotted. These also use Axe, so they end up getting Shield Breaker, but it's interesting to note that their axe, I think, are made of stone. So you actually don't have a lot of armor piercing compared to, say, the Axe Band's version of the axe. But overall damage is actually higher because the base damage is just much higher than the six. Uh, you're at 23. And, you know, compared to the Axe Band, it's the weakest defensive unit compared to the other two. But we're not going to dive too deep into these units. They're going to be no surprise D tier for us. It's very hard to rank unit into higher tiers. I think for most of our multiplayer unit tier lists, most of the unit, I think over half, are going to be D tier. And they're going to be, you know, unusable in the multiplayer scene because if you use them, you're kind of just wasting money. It's better to just upgrade your other more premium unit sometime than spend a little bit of money on a unit that's going to cause morale issues for you. And with that said, moving on to the 500 to 525, we have the Tian Warrior, which is available to Han Sui, Ma Chao, and Ma Teng. And this is just a dual axe wielding, decent damage, very good charge infantry, but low morale, low defensive stats, hard to use. And if you're using those Tian generals, you want Tian cavalry. You don't really want Tian warriors, so that's going to weigh against this unit. And then Bringers of Peace. Now, this unit is available to only Zhang Liang and Zhang Jiao, and it's only a tier 3. It is unbreakable. However, these are ultra small unit size. So on a 120 default size or a large unit size, you only get one quarter of them. And I think that's actually super punishing in multiplayer, because even though they're unbreakable, you're limited by funds, you're paying 500 for only one-fourth the units. So even if they have decent damage, you're missing out on a bunch, and it's easy to get them picked off by enemy range, by enemy cavalry. So I don't see their value as super high, you know, even if they have axe for shield break and they're unbreakable, just because I don't see paying this much for only 30 units being worth it. And then we have the Saber Defectors available to the three Jum Brothers from the Mandate Heaven DLC. Uh, decent charge, very poor damage. Overall, just sort of a Saber Militia replacement, to be honest but at a pretty high cost. And then jumping up the cost a little bit between 550 and 575, we have a couple more Yellow Turban and Naman units, Chosen of the Eight Immortals. Now, above 50 morale is where I consider it decently high. 
you can survive Sun Ce's roar, you can survive Ventral's roar. The only roar you cannot survive is Zhang Fei's roar, but that's only one use, and that's okay. No one can really survive that unless you are unbreakable. But if you're above 50, I think that's plenty high for multiplayer purposes. Also, extremely high attack rate, good damage, good evasion, and decent amount of armor. The only problem here is, once again, it's a small unit. So we're only at 60 unit. It's not as bad as 30, but the problem here is the total health is the same as the 30 unit one at 54k. So those 30 units actually end up getting more per unit health compared to the 60 unit guys. So that does weigh against them. It's easy to lose these units and thus lose the damage. And they are only available on Zhang Jiao at tier three. So that does weigh into things and they end up being a little bit pricier as well. The stats look decently high. So I think they still have a place in multiplayer. It's just not a very high value place because you are because you end up paying for a unit without that high of a health per unit per se. So easy to take damage, easy to lose unit, and thus you lose morale, you lose your damage output because your high damage is only per unit. And if you lose a couple, then it's going to hurt your performance. Moving on to a Naman unit, the Valley Tribesmen. These are the slightly more upgraded version of the Naman infantry, medium class. 30 morale, very low damage, entirely on base almost. That's not very favorable, so I don't think these units are very viable, especially they have the added weakness against fire. Then moving on to Redeem Outlaw, these are, once again, a Nunmine unit. Uh, these are available for the Jump Brothers again, introduced in Mandate of Heaven. They're going to be the slightly upgraded version of, you know, the Saber Militia tier that's turned around. It's not anything pretty. The damage looks pretty low, morale slightly higher. Most of the Yellow Turban variant of the Han armies, the Defectors and the Redeemered, uh, these units are just slightly more premium version of the Han counterparts that cost a little bit more. And if the Han counterparts not really worth it, they're not really worth it either. And then we have a Northern unit, Northern Saber Infantry. Uh, this is the cheapest Northern melee class unit. There's going to be a veteran version of this unit. And typically Northern units have a slightly better armor and defensive stat compared to a lot of the regular option at a relatively low price. Um, but still, at these damage figures, it just doesn't make sense to really hire them, especially with only 30 morale. That is a pretty big weakness. But they are available on a lot of generals because everyone associated with Yuan Shao as well as Hal Tao's factions can recruit these northern units. Then taking another cost jump to 580 and 600, we have the White Tiger Warrior. These are exclusive to Yan Bai Hu's faction, and if you have them on Yan Bai Hu, then they are automatically stock. So we have to take that into consideration. And if we do think about it that way, then we have a splash damage axe user with slow attack, but decent attack damage and armor piercing, good charge. You can guarantee to charge this unit into the enemy. It uses an axe, so if you're up against shielded infantry, these will be really good, but still a very niche role in that, you know, they are kind of fragile, almost extremely fragile. And if you don't have a method to increase their attack rate, they're not going to do that much damage, uh, but they are able to avoid a lot of damage from range and even cavalry because you can stay hidden while just standing on the field. Then moving right above them at the same cost, we have the Qingzhou Assault Infantry. And these units basically have misplaced devotion and very good damage. So if you look at it, 127 charge, 22 base, 22 armor piercing at 24 speed. That is actually excellent. The armor, evasion, and range block chance are all really solid as well. Their morale is their weak point, but thankfully they have misplaced devotion, which means if their morale ever drops low, you end up with 30 second boost that will give you double damage and unbreakable. You will lose all your evasion, but you won't break. And that's a huge bonus. Being unbreakable on conditional statements like this obviously is not as good as just being unbreakable straight up. But still, this is excellent because this occurs whenever you're about to break. And that's a guarantee to keep you alive. And by the time your bonus ends, if you have defeated the enemy and you got out of a bad situation, whether that's a roar, whether that's fire arrows, whether that's getting charged from the flank by a cavalry, and you won that fight because you had double damage, we're looking at 44, 44 with 24 attack speed, you're very likely to win. 
you can bounce back with regular amount of morale after that. And should you dip below again, you will activate misplaced devotion again. There's a 120 second cooldown between each use. But even then, that's very powerful. So I actually rate the Qingzhou units very, very high. And they're also relatively cheap. Then we have People's Warband. It's another one of those yellow turban units that have very high base damage, very good attack speed. It has a decent amount of charge. The morale is slightly better, no defense, but it costs a lot more compared to some of the units we saw earlier. So that is something weighing slightly against it. And also it's only available on Heyi after tier two. So that is also another limitation compared to say the Huang Lao Paragon that's available on Heman, Huang Shao, Zhang Bao, and Zhang Jiao. Then for the Saber Infantry, the medium tier Han frontline unit. Now these are available for all Sentinels and Commander. They have more formations, they have more stats in terms of defensive options, and they cost more. So I think that's the trade-off there. Wuling Fighters, these are the anti-general Nanman infantry. Now, as we mentioned, your melee infantry or purple units are meant to kill other infantry unit, not general. So unless you're playing on records mode or you have a reliable way to convince the enemy general to run into your formation, the shield wall can knock them off their horse. So technically they could set up a trap with the shield wall, knock the enemy off their horse, and then whack them to death uh, with the 30 attack rate, four times damage with a tribal pride against general. So 124 base damage and 12 armor piercing against a 50% armor general, which is relatively average. You'll be only doing about, you know, 70 something damage per whack uh, per unit. And that might not seem too high, but it's actually not that low either. So they are pretty effective at killing generals. Now, of course, if the general happened to have some sort of Flame of the Phoenix, you might be in trouble. But assuming you're killing, let's say, a commander or a strategist that runs into you, then they will get the job done fairly quickly, although the lack of armor piercing damage is a little bit concerning. Then moving on to 630 to 660, we have the Leon Daring Infantry. These are available to all generals associated with Yuan Shao's faction. They have the do or die active buff that you can activate for them. It comes every 180 seconds essentially and last 60 seconds during the use. And basically you get 25% speed, 25% charge, 25% extra damage, and 25% melee charge bonus. Of these, the speed boost and the melee charge bonus are the most relevant. Their base damage is a little bit too low to enjoy the 25%. Of course, you'd rather have it than not have it, but it's not going to add a lot of damage to you. Essentially, you end up with about 24 base and perhaps 17, 18 armor piercing. It's not a big increase, and the damage is not going to be high on these units, but the defensive stat's okay with 52% melee evasion and the speed boost and the charge boost, that's really what's gonna make this unit strong. Of course, you have to use it well, time it well, so that you can actually get a good charge off during the duration. Use it too early, you're just wasting it. This doesn't have a limitation to how many times you can use it. So in multiplayer battles, I actually could see this unit have multiple use of do or die to help you boost your damage throughout the course of the battle. Then we have another He Yi exclusive infantry, the White Wave Veterans. Um, these are sort of the medium-ish tier infantry unit for the yellow turbans. I know they are a light unit here by classification, but they're the more slightly upgraded variant of the yellow turban warriors we saw earlier. Better stats all around, but higher costs. Nothing really crazy about these units. Moving on, we have the mercenary infantry. These are the mercenary units available to all Sunjian or Wu's faction. And their problem is very low morale. And to be honest, mercenary units are god tier in campaign because they're ready right when you recruit them, and they're absolutely terrible in multiplayer because their stats are really poor, they cost pretty high, and the bonus of being instantly mustered is meaningless in multiplayer. So these are not great units. Moving on, we have the axe throwers for the Nanman, and their main damage is their axe that they throw. Once you use up those two ammo, they become pretty poor, but each of those axe they throw out hurts like crazy. 75 armor piercing, 25 base for 100 damage total. They're absolutely general killers if you use them well. But because of the low ammo, you have to micro them a bit so their target selection is better or else you risk wasting it. And after they use that up, they basically don't do much damage. Perhaps you can use the axe for shield breaking debuff, but really not that worth it. Then following them, we have the Yue Remnant Warriors. 
These are only recruitable on Yan Bai Hu's faction, and thus they will have stock if you use them on Yan Bai Hu. These are very good option infantry for stock. If you look at their stats, they have incredible damage. 50 base, 12 armor piercing, full unit, unlike a lot of the yellow turban options that have similar stat line. 98 charge, even though you might not want to charge them oftentimes because you might lay them in a trap to draw enemy units closer to you. And they have decent armor at 45%. So overall at this price, with the morale they have as well, decent damage, guaranteed to get up close to enemy, the Yue Remnant Warriors are surprisingly good options to have. Probably better than the White Tiger Warriors we saw earlier, just because the damage here is actually more consistent, much higher attack rate, and much higher just raw number two. So these are probably the better infantry option you could rely on for Yan Bai Hu's faction. And the low speed, doesn't matter. They're staying there, hiding until you draw the enemy close into your invisible trap. Then moving up the price, we're at 680 to 700, and we have some eight princes unit in the Shu Raiders. So these are mini yellow dragons, as I called them from before, in our unique unit tier list. They have very high charge, but their defense stats is absolutely horrible. Their damage stats not great. They really depend on that one charge. And I don't know if they're really worth it at 680, and it forces you to pick Sima Yue as your commanding general. So that's a huge limitation. In faction unique unit tier list, it doesn't matter because you're playing that faction anyways, and that's how you get that unique unit. Here in multiplayer, you have your choice of any general in the game. And picking a pretty weak eight princes general just for this unit, I just don't see it happening. Moving on, we have the Black Mountain Marauders at 700. These are obviously a nice scare unit. And these are obviously a very good scare unit with high damage, 30 attack speed, 30 armor piercing, plus 13 base, very good charge of 135. Obviously you have to pick Zhang Yan for this unit, but Zhang Yan's pretty good. And axe units with scare, uh, it's not bad to shock the enemy infantry line with very good charge as well, 135. Then we have an eight princes default infantry option for the eight princes generals. And this is the dull sword guard that replaces the Zian sword guard, which we'll see right after this for the same cost. It's just the flavor addition. If you look at the damage and stats, they're very similar. I would say the Zian sword guard's a better option. And given that the eight princes generals are really not that strong in multiplayer, I would say these are pointless units. And as you can see, they didn't even get the cow trap and the smoke screen update uh, that was added for the Han units. That includes the Shu Raiders as well, and that is another weakness for these units. Then finally, after you know talking about the Jian Sword Guard along with the Dal Sword Guard, we have the Nanjong Champions, and these are available for all Naman Generals as they share the entire roster of Naman units for multiplayer. Poor damage, so even though they have a big axe, it's a lot of base damage for some reason. They do have access to Turtle. And that's one of the few purple infantry with access to turtle. Now, I don't place a large amount of weight for turtle formation because it doesn't really help you in multiplayer. Slowing yourself down to block arrows, that's never really going to come. Unless you're playing a siege battle where you can use that to tank up towers, there's really no benefit to bring turtle formation, especially on melee infantry. You're never going to fight other infantry in that formation. So I don't really see a value there. And given their poor damage and high costs, I just don't really see a role for these units in multiplayer either. Then moving up to 750 to 780, Exemplar of the Doll. And these units are available on Zhang Bao and Zhang Liang only at tier two. Looking at their stats, once again, the damage figure is actually a little bit low, but their health is really high. Most health at this 120 unit, standards at 72K. These units have 86k somehow, so a small boost. It's not super big, but it is a bonus nonetheless. They have decent defensive stats, but overall, I don't really see the cost being worth the little bit of extra health, especially since they don't do a lot of damage. And then we have the Rapid Tiger Infantry. Now, I do meme them a lot for campaign, for Yuan Shu's faction, but in multiplayer, they're actually not that bad. Uh, their damage is typically on the high end. They have decent charge. They have very high evasion. Their stats are actually pretty decent. They're bad in campaign because they don't really survive range damage very well, and they're not good against cavalry since they are melee infantry. In multiplayer, that's not often an issue. 
you don't run into that many range composition, unlike in campaign. You don't have to siege cities, and there is a defined role for anti-infantry infantry options because a lot of people bring spear units to counter cavalry. So you need something to kill them, and the rapid tiger infantry could be that option. Then we have the Wu Guo axe throwers. Now these are just the fancier axe throwers with higher cost. If you look at the damage figures, you're only paying for a little bit extra defensive stats. It's really not worth it. Finally, we have the Followers of the Flame at 3 fourth unit size, or 90 here. Uh, their health is decreased by the same amount, so per unit health is the same. They obviously would have the Flaming ability, which actually drastically increased their damage. I think it's 56 damage over 3 seconds added on to whatever they hit. So that's really good. And I believe their version of the fire attack also decreases your melee evasion by 50%. So that's pretty insane. Splash damage on top of that. Decent attack rate for a splash damage user. Usually they're 15. These are 20. They don't have the highest charge. They definitely don't have good armor. But because their unique attribute and the 56 extra damage per hit with splash, they actually do a lot of damage. And that makes them quite valuable. Then getting ever pricier, we're at 820 to 850, starting with the Tiger Warriors. They are obviously Tiger Tamers with a simple unit behind the Tamer unit. They come with 30 unit size here. Uh, they're very weak because of the big nerf to their charge bonus on the Tigers. Tigers are very fragile and low health. You can't control Tigers. And all the enemy to do is go after the lone Tiger Warriors after the Tiger is gone. And once they kill you, your unit's considered dead for the purpose of the battle. And that's even if you still have tigers running around on the map. Then moving on to hidden axes, these are the ones with snipe and stock. Now, snipe doesn't have that high of a value in multiplayer because player can see where the arrows are coming from, but stock does have value. So stock can put you in a good position. You can flank people. These have decent charge, very high damage and attack speed to go along with it. Plus the scare bonus. I rate these unit quite high. You obviously can only recruit them with Zheng Jiang, but she's a pretty decent general too. Then we have the upgraded Northern Veteran Saber Infantry, as we mentioned earlier. We're just basically getting extra stats on defense. Not really worth it in my opinion. They also have turtle formation, but as we mentioned before, I don't give Turtle a lot of weight when you're not playing campaign because Turtle is great against siege battles, but not very good in multiplayer. Slows your unit down, reduce some of your melee stats. It's just not what you want to see. You want to be more dynamic and more mobile in multiplayer. Then we have the Warriors of Xu. Uh, these are Sima Yue's unique unit again. We have seen the Xu Raiders earlier. These are the upgraded version with slightly better stats. Still not going to be worth it because you're paying more for them now too. So uh, same reason why we rejected those. Then 900 things get a little bit more interesting starting with the Youxia. These are exclusive to Heyi once again. And honestly, of all the units exclusive to Heyi, this is the unit I would recruit because they're automatically unbreakable. They are half unit size, but at 54k each Unit's health is actually 50% higher than your standard unit, so they stay alive longer. They have a decent charge, okay attack speed with a good damage ratio, and because you have to use them with Heyi, Heyi has a lot of unit boost with his abilities, so they will benefit from that. You also have very high defensive stat, over 65% evasion with the shield, and 63% armor with the shield as well. Those are some insane stats. You also have access to a decent amount of formations. So overall, I think these units are excellent. Then we have the Vulnerable Wu. These are available on He Man and Huang Shao. And their thing is they have poison weapon. They're also half unit size, same health as the Youxia. They're not unbreakable, but their morale is above 50, which is very respectable. And the poison will do 56 damage per every three seconds, causes scare. The damage on the weapon obviously will be lower because of the high damage from the poison. They have extremely high evasion, but if you look at it compared to Yosia with the shield, it's the same thing. Unless Yosia is fighting an axe unit or getting flanked, they would have matching evasion, but Vulnerable Wu has much lower armor. They're really just a scare shock unit with poison to quickly kill off their enemy because poison damage is quite high. If you look at all the damage figures from pretty much all the units, it's very rare to actually have a unit do more than 56 damage per hit. And here you're doing whatever damage you're doing with your weapon, 1410, 
and then the poison will be ticked on afterward and you can't really avoid the poison either so very strong then we have a true infantry this is once again an eight princes unit these are available for samawo a and the morale is close to 50 so it's pretty decent health is pretty average attack is more base damage which is a bit sad and it has all the issues with eight princes not having cow trap and smoke screen it does have good defensive stat but you're also paying a pretty good amount uh some is not the worst general to pick from eight princes but still probably not worth in my opinion uh is it completely unusable probably not but uh, it's close. Then staying at 900 cost, we've got four more of these units. Yellow Dragons, we mentioned them before. Extremely high charge bonus. And that's really how you should use them. And if you're worried about getting picked off by range, they have turtle formation. They're going to protect them from range and from cavalry options. The thing is, once they do get into melee, the initial charge period is in their advantage. And after that, they fall off a bit because the defensive stat is really poor. But overall, uh, you will get some nice shock damage from these units, and that makes them pretty decent. Then we have Jamma Jian, who have good splash damage, poor armor, slow attack speed. That's their main weakness. If you have some way to boost their attack speed, they become much more viable in terms of just being a shock damage dealer. But overall, I think they're a little bit too fragile to be used with only 20% evasion, 26% armor. That's their main issue. Then Pearl Dragons, often not using campaign due to the reform limitations, but if you can use the multiplayer, they're still a worthy dragon unit, a very high evasion, which makes up for their poor armor a little bit, a decent attack, 35-15, it's not too bad, and you know, they are a nice little premium unit you can use with high stats all around, except for armor. And one thing to note about Pro Dragons is that they're available for pretty much all Sentinel Generals, so that adds a lot of flexibility where you have more specialized units only available on some Generals. But with that said, we have the Might of the Valley next. These are not my unit that's pretty elite. I don't think they have Splash, but I think they should have Splash just because they also use a two-handed axe and every other two-handed axe unit have that exact same attack line of 15 attack speed, 1938, but they all have splash and this unit doesn't say it has splash. I actually didn't test it out in the battles, but I would want to say they have splash, but we're going to assume they don't because it's not stated here. They have very good charge, 194. Um, their damage, as we mentioned, is good with high armor piercing and they have the axe that breaks shield. Not only that, once they do fall below 50% health, they get 15% boost to their damage and 33% boost to their attack rate. That is key. Attack rate boost is key for these big, slow attacking axes. With a 33% increase, they become much more viable. Now, of course, this only happens when you drop below 50% health. But overall, because that feature exists, they become much more viable in multiplayer. Finally, we're moving above 1,000 cost per unit. We have the Scholar Warriors from the Yellow Turban. These are high base damage unit with half health, decently high morale, overall high evasion, just good stats. Uh, you're paying for a lot of base damage here, but I think that could actually work because the base damage is high enough. If you have 53% armor, which is really the high end for infantry units, you're still doing 31 plus 15 on them. I think that's respectable at the price you're paying. And if you end up fighting against a unit that doesn't have that high armor, you're just straight winning. Then moving on to the Warriors of the Left, the upgraded variant of the Rapid Tiger for Yuan Shu. These have the same weapon, but their defensive stat became a lot better. Like I said, these are actually usable in multiplayer because they have high stats. 58 morale is good, decent amount of charge, decent amount of damage at 24 attack speed, and their defense stat is actually excellent. Then moving on to the Fist of the Bandit Queen, their issue is they don't have the snipe bonus, but that's fine. We mentioned snipe is not that good. Overall, the range component for this unit is also just not that strong. It's a base arrow damage, 25-8, so you're not really depending on that. You're paying extra, basically, for the same melee unit with slightly better defensive stat. I would just stick with hidden axes here. So I don't actually give a lot of credit to this uh, costlier version of Fist of the Bandit Queen, but they can still work. But if you have the spare 150 per unit for the upgrade, I would still upgrade them because multiplayer is about premium unit. The morale difference will be worth it here, in my opinion. And then finally, we have the Camp Crushers. Now these are actually pretty good. So they shore up the difference of the Jamma Jian unit 
with the extremely low armor, you're getting essentially 33% extra armor on these units with slightly better charge, slightly better morale for the extra 100 you pay. Now, the generals you have available for these are going to be generals associated with Lü Bu. So we have Zhang Liao, we have Gao Shun, we have Lü Bu. Those are all very strong and popular generals, especially Zhang Liao. If you end up getting an army composition that is considered weaker than enemy by spending slightly less money, then Zhang Liao will also activate a boost that will increase attack rate by 33% for the whole army for the duration of the battle. And then Camp Crusher would essentially have 20 attack speed with these damage figures, and it just becomes a lot stronger. So in that particular combination, it is very strong. But overall, they're much more usable compared to, say, Jamatian, even if they do cost 100 more. Then we end with the really premium unit, the Imperial units at 1150 and 1250, respectively. Now, the Imperial Guard is Sima Liang's variant from Eight Princes. Uh, not too much to talk about. Let's just talk about the Imperial Sword Guard. These are available to He Jin and Huang Fu Song, and they're really good. The stats just really high. I know they cost a lot. But I mentioned multiple times already, multiplayer is about fielding perhaps smaller, more premium armies compared to spending on massive amount of units. So if you could get, say, two Imperial Sword Guard that will give each other the Imperial Solidarity boost, so extra 10 morale, we're at 64 now. We have another 10% evasion, so combine the shield bonus, we're looking at an 80% evasion infantry with 73% armor, and then a plus 10 flat boost to melee armor piercing damage. So that's looking at 24 now with 32 attack rate. So everything looks amazing. So Imperial Sword Guard, I think are excellent. The Imperial Guard lack a lot of these bonuses from this passive buff and the stats wasn't comparable even before that. So overall, I think they're gonna be slightly worse, uh, but the Imperial Sword Guard is excellent. So with all this information, let's jump back to the tier list and rank all these units. Alrighty, so as you can see here, we have a lot of units to get through, but once we get to the D tier, basically we're gonna slot everyone else in. We're gonna start from the top for that reason. So starting with the S tier, we don't have many choices here. We're gonna start with the Yellow Sky Herald. And this unit is selected mainly because it's unbreakable at 120 units. It has a decent amount of damage with 21 armor piercing, and that gives it immense value. It's very cheap at 450. So we're gonna give it a pretty high rank here of S. And joining it, we're gonna add another yellow turban unit in the Huang Lao Paragon. This has been a pretty popular unit that I have used in campaigns. It's basically very cheap. It doesn't have that much defensive stat in terms of health, but the evasion and armor is actually very decent for what you're paying with excellent morale and of course, extremely high base damage. Then joining them, we have the Tingzhou Assault Infantry. And this might be a surprise choice, but Misplaced Devotion, the ability that gives you Unbreakable for the next 30 seconds, is extremely good because not only does it give you Unbreakable, it gives you double damage. And that makes these units quite excellent for their cost. Any unit that can withstand Morale Shocks in multiplayer gets extra points for me. So that's why the Unbreakable Yellow Sky Herald and the Tingzhou unit are rated so high. And then finally joining them, we have the Yue Remnant Warrior. These are from Yan Bai Hu's roster. They have stock by default because of that. And they are going to be great with their high armor, which is a rarity for their cost of 660. Decent amount of damage and being able to hide out and surprise your enemy where you can hit them at the weakest is also an added bonus. So these are going to be our S tier units here for the purple infantry. Then continuing to the A tier, we have more stock unit with the hidden axes, not only stock, but also snipe. Um, they have good scare, they have good damage with high armor piercing. So with their stock capability, similar to the Yuan Remnant, we're gonna place them quite high. Now they're not S tier because unlike Yan Bai Hu, the unit itself has stock, not the general. So actually the Yuan Remnant Warrior is much better to pick because Yuan Remnant Warrior actually forces you to pick Yan Bai Hu and end up allowing you to pick other cheaper options like cavalry and giving them stock as well. Whereas if you end up with hidden axes, you're gonna have basically a full unit of hidden axes. And that's not something you always want. Plus the cost difference is pretty huge between these two, 660 versus 850. So I would say the Rear Remnant is much better and deserves the S, whereas the hidden axes can drop down to the A, even if they have dual weapon usage. And joining them, we have the Xia. 
And Yu's half from Hei is of course unbreakable, half unit size, but very solid stats all around, especially considering Hei also have a lot of infantry buffs on his character. Then continuing the trend of expensive but high quality units, Yellow Dragons will also be A tier, as well as the Imperial Sword Guard. We mentioned both of these units have their place, with the Yellow Dragon having multiple formations, including Turtle, and extremely high charge that can match a lot of Shock Cavalry. And Imperial Sword Guard just has superior stat in all aspects, even though they cost the most. Their cost is well worth it. The only downfall with those units is you have to recruit at least two of them to get the bonus stat, and should one of them fall, the bonus stat will disappear for the other unit as well. So you should definitely keep them together and fight them together to get the most out of them. Then shifting down to the B tier, we will start with the cheapest unit, the Peasant Warriors. And they're here because they're expendable, they have decent charge, and they're extremely cheap. You can pay for six of them, and they'll still be cheaper than the Imperial Sword Guard. And that allows you to spend more of your money on other options, perhaps. So that's always an added bonus for them, and that's why they're going to be on the B tier here. They're usable. You don't mind throwing a few filler units in at the end because you won't have to worry about morale impact for your whole army. Then joining them, we also have the Yellow Turban Chanters. Now, you only want one of them. They have Encourage, which boosts morale, and they have their special chant sacred chant that increase your attack by 10 percent and your armor by 10 percent the armor boost is why we want them so these cost only 400 they themselves obviously have very low combat capabilities but a very respectable 40 points of morale but the main boost is to boost the rest of your army as the chant is why you want these units then following them we have the Li Yang daring infantry with the do or die bonus another ability you can use that boosts your speed and your charge bonus by 25 percent as well as your damage and that's multiple use as well anytime you have a skill cap based ability like this you can actually do a lot of great things charge into a situation do your damage and rest and recharge for another charge especially on multiplayer battles that tend to last you know more than three minutes for sure and there will be a lot of melee fighting, assuming the enemy will also bring a decent amount of melee infantry. So these have a place. Speaking of melee fighting, the Follower of the Flame is going to be a B tier. Now, typically they could be higher, but the thing is they are really fragile with almost no armor. These are naked men holding a giant flaming mace. The fire damage is excellent. The charge is pretty good. But the problem is they have smaller unit size, thus slightly lower health, and with the defensive weakness, you can actually get picked off pretty easily by cavalry, range, or general before they can apply their debuffs on enemy units. But if you do get them safely into combat, they are premium units. Speaking of premium unit that can do additional damage, the Vulnerable Wu will also join this group. They cost slightly higher at 900. They have the poison damage instead of the fire. They have pretty decent stat along that with high melee evasion, so they're going to do better in combat long term, but they're also half unit sides. But fortunately, they have the 54k health, so technically 50% more than what they should have per unit compared to the rest. And with the poison damage ticking and scare, they're pretty excellent flanking units to add to your army composition. And lastly, we're going to throw in Camp Crushers. So there is a lot of caveat here. I think Camp Crushers are pretty decent for their cost because of the high armor boost they get compared to Jamma Jian. They still attack a little bit too slowly, so unless you have a very good natural choke point where you can use the splash damage to their full effect, they're not going to be that efficient. But as I mentioned, if you can activate Zhang Nel's bonus, then they become quite fearsome with 20 attack speed, and then they become really good. So I think putting them at average B tier here is pretty suitable at their cost of 1,000 and their limited choice of generals. But fortunately, the three generals you can recruit them on are all very strong. So you won't regret it with any of your choices. Then moving on into the C tier, we have a lot more specialized options here. We have things like Chosen of the Eight Immortals, very high damage, but unfortunately half unit size. We have Wulin Fighters, which are right here, that can do decent damage against generals, but you have to kind of spring a trap on them with your formation or have some other method to keep them in place so you can whack them with your four times damage. You also have things like Axe Throwers, which actually have very good range options, even though you have limited ammo. Once you hit those axes on general, you'll see they actually melt generals with their extremely high armor piercing damage, and that's a pretty efficient way of killing generals with javelins, crossbows, or with axes in this case. Now, once those axes are gone, they become quite a weak unit, 
but at least they're relatively cheap at 650. That's why you wouldn't want the upgraded Wu Guo axe. You actually want the regular axe throwers for this specialized purpose, just because the unit itself is just not good regardless. At least just get the same ammo and weapon damage with the cheaper cost and try to hit them on enemy generals when they come close to you, uh, not suspecting a lot of return damage, which these units can actually produce. Then we're going to give the Northern Veteran Saber units some respect. They do have turtle formation, which is rare for these melee infantry. They're available on a wide cast of generals, and they're not super expensive for the stat that you're getting at A50. So I think they do have a place here. Then also joining them for their high stats, I think we can sneak a Pearl Dragon in. I don't think they're that bad. They have very good evasion, which is their strength. You don't have to worry about getting reforms like single player. So picking this up, they're available on a lot of generals, all sentinels essentially. Um, so I think they're actually quite decent for multiplayer. And continuing with units, I'll never recruit in campaign, but in multiplayer, they're okay. We have the warriors of the left. Now, of course, I don't know when you would actually pick up Yuan Shu, but his units are not that bad for multiplayer. So I think it is a viable option here. And continue our trend of more premium units, Might of the Valley can also join our list here because they have the Berserk stat that's pretty decent for increasing their attack rate. Uh, that's basically their strength of speeding up their dual axe with high armor piercing damage and good charge. Then perhaps the last unit we can sneak in here is the Scholar Warriors, which is if you want to go with a more premium damage output for the Yellow Turbans at the cheaper options that we have ranked above then the Scholar Warrior would be sort of the upgraded Huang Lao Paragons, but they do cost more than twice as much, so you do have to weigh your options there. If you happen to have money, then perhaps this would be an option, but they're definitely lower tier here. Even their premium stat doesn't really justify paying twice as much for a unit that you could have gotten with the Huang Lao Paragons, which is why Huang Lao Paragons is basically S tier, just because you get such high damage output for such a low price. And then everything else here, every single unit you see down here is going to join the D tier. There is no reason to recruit any of them in multiplayer. If you have money left over, I'd rather upgrade my existing units, or I would actually just spend them on more premium versions of the unit that I have. Uh, of course, if you find yourself in a situation where you have to recruit these units or you feel like trying them out, it's not going to doom you, but I just don't think you're getting your value with these units. I think you can just do much better uh, in terms of recruitment by recruiting other units instead. So quickly, I'm going to throw all of them in here. Like People's Warband, perhaps is like not a bad unit per se if you look at it, but why pick him when you can pick Huang Lao Paragon, right? A lot of these choices are going to be just like you have something that's way better as an alternative. It's not even that high of a defensive upgrade. Like if you have the spare money, might as well get the Scholar Warriors. So uh, that's why Scholar Warriors barely a C and Huang Lao Paragon's S and People's Warband is going to be a D tier along with all these units here. And this is going to be a pretty familiar trend as we move forward with our different color units. You're going to have a lot of units in D tier because most units are not that viable and you need to be picky when you're playing multiplayer. Of course, these are based on my opinion and I could definitely make a mistake. So if you spot something that you feel is off, feel free to leave a comment. If you have a unit that's your favorite that you think deserves a better ranking, definitely leave a comment. Or if you think one of the more premium units is actually not that strong, feel free to let me know and we'll discuss in the comment section below. But that's going to do it for our tier list video here for the purple infantry. And I'll see you guys next time with the green units. Until then, bye!